happy Boxing Day. I hope you had a, a fantastic Christmas day with your friends and family um, and you're still enjoying Boxing Day. This is the Away With Words spoken word live stream compilation show bringing together uh, some of the highlights of the shows that we've done in 2020. It's been, it's been a, a strange year. Um, a, a lot of, of negativity, obviously, with what's been going on. Um, but a lot of positives have come out of it. And, and one of the positives uh, have, have been the Away With Words live streams and Zoom shows uh, that we've, we've managed to put on during the course of the year. Uh, it's been a big learning experience for me. Uh, if you'd have asked me what Zoom was in March, I would have said a song by Fat Larry's band. I had no idea. So we've moved on. Uh, we've kept together. We've kept spoken word going. Uh, we've kept people together and, and in contact with each other and ensure that people have continued to have a voice in a difficult time. So it's been a, a, a really uh, strange year, but a great year in, in, in many ways. Um, and what we thought we'd do is, by way of saying thank you to everybody, we put together a compilation show um, uh, so that we can get a feel for what we've achieved uh, and what we've done over the year. Our first um, event, which was a little bit rickety, I'll be honest, um, was in April. It was, a, it was a really good show. We had some absolutely fantastic performers. We had a brilliant guest star. Um, uh, and we're going to open the first sequence of clips with him, the brilliant Marvin Cheeseman. Uh, and we'll follow that with Terry Island, Andy Hems, Dave Drasdo, and Amy Liddy. Uh, this, this first poem is called Craig David Gets Food Poisoning. Um, hope you've all had your tea because this might put you off a bit, put you off eating for a while. Uh, Craig David Gets Food Poisoning. Did a roast chicken on Sunday. Loads of it left over on Monday. Had some with a salad on Tuesday. Fridge was on the blink on Wednesday. Chanced it in a curry on Thursday. I was throwing up on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Not to mention shitting through the eye of a needle. Thank you. Uh, a concert that I went to quite a few years ago now. It was a Coldplay concert. I'm almost ashamed to admit. Uh, and this poem is called The Wholesomeness of Coldplay and Their Fans. A squeaky clean affair indeed, not a trace of crack or weed. Coldplay fans formed order queues for t-shirts, programmes, pies and booze. Prim and proper, well behaved, nothing vulgar or depraved, just well scrubbed, well healed punters wear. Not one foul word defiled the air. No low life scum to lower the tone. Not one pint pot of piss got thrown. Not one theft, not one arrest. Cliff Richard would have been impressed. Chris Martin arms outstretched divine. My bottled water turned to wine. This saintly chap sang one last song. The congregation sang along. Then left blessed, cleansed and holier to gently paint the town magnolia thank you this is the house that jack was building every bit of it was nicked every roof tile and timber every nail screw and brick because when you're working on the govy back pocket minimum rate because your benefits being sanctioned by an austerity driven state you were late for an appointment because they went and cancelled your bus and the job centre advisor kicked up such a fuss. He didn't really want to know the reason why. Just mark your case, clusters work shy. And when Jack got caught robbing, no mention of the stingy boss, just a restitution order to make good his loss. Jack did his bird in prison and now he's got it made. And though lag inside taught him the secondary banking trade. He drives a newish roller now because he learned his lesson well. And the job centre advisor can go in rotting hell. Jack's well accepted by his peers in the golf club bar. And very well respected for the mark of his car. For when you flash your cash, nobody cares how it's made. This is the house that Jack bought. Better end of the property trade. Jack now he does his robin in a more socially acceptable way and he just can't wait to start every single day. And the guy who paid him govy now wants to be his bezzy mate. This is the house he built for Jack. 
gated executive controlled estate and the house that Jack was building stands unfinished on the plot it, it, uh, overgrown with reeds and just left to rot and I went to a friend of mine for his latest book it's called Albany Street on a cross town mission for Rick's latest hoping not to be collared by the fuzz suspecting he loves his stripped down anonymity more than most had to be quick he's only got 1500 left he hands me on one at a time by a litter picker remarking that we should have filmed this bizarre act maybe in the next pandemic friend thank you see you soon here's one by uh, john cooper clark that you'll probably recognize i want to be yours i want to be your vacuum cleaner breathing in your dust I want to be your Ford Cortina, I will never rust. If you like your coffee hot, let me be your coffee pot. You call the shots, I want to be yours. I want to be your raincoat for those frequent rainy days. I want to be your dreamboat when you want to sail away. Let me be your teddy bear, let me take you anywhere. I don't care, I want to be yours. I want to be your electric heater, I will not run out. I want to be the electric heater you'll get cold without. I want to be your setting lotion, hold your hair in deep devotion, deep as a deep Atlantic ocean, that's how deep is my devotion. Hi everyone, my name's Amy Liddy and I've got a few poems to share with you tonight. They're quite short, I wrote them during the lockdown period, so kind of like March, April onwards. So inspiration sort of been from when I've been out walking outdoors and seeing the changing in the season um, and those kind of things. So the first one is called Ghosts. And just like that, there we were in the complete absence of human touch, walking each other home. Mellow. Early morning sun kisses my neck as my shadow stretches ahead. Mindfulness, follow the breath, says the American voice in my ear. And I should try to step out my head and into my body, she says. I'm listening, only I've been here before and I'll be here again. Daydreaming, floating on the surface of a new day. Bathed in an ocean of opportunities to drift away. Ambido. High definition colours encompass us, the rich canvas of May, tired eyes refreshed. Pink blossom hangs in the air of summer where my soul dances, hands locked as vines around the old oak tree, grounded. A sun-drenched lane, slithers of sunlight stream through the trees to a choir of birdsong. Words tumble from lips where time melts into the setting sun and we wonder what the future might be but this is where we are where we are is here this is all we need okay our second clip from april uh brings you the wonderful roy heath the marvelous sue island and the immense dave tuck little clue Some of you might have heard it before, it's called I Love Chicken. There were a couple of swear words in it. I have substituted them so as not to offend. You may be able to spot them. I Love Chicken. Chicken, 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 chicken. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Chicken, 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 chicken. I love plucking chicken. Chicken, 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 chicken. Lovely chicken stock. Chicken, 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 chicken. I love a bit of cock. I love chicken on a drumstick. The dark meat is the best. And now and then I must confess, I love a bit of breast. But chicken feet and chicken wings, I'm not so partial to. Though on a Sunday tea time, any cock will do. So you can fry it, grill it, roast it, but make sure it's cooked right through. Don't get a dicky tummy from cooking on the barbecue, you can roast it in a bag with Yorkshire pudding gravy, so veg and mashed potato and some 
stuffing, maybe. Carrots, 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 organic and ready for picking. Carrots, 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 they're delicious. Serve with chicken. So grab yourself a chicken kebab when you're out and on the go. Or a lovely, lovely pizza topped with chicken and chorizo. And tomato and basil with pasta. It's fine, it won't taste nasty. You can have it in your sweet and sour. Or even in a pasty. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. I love a power with rabbit. Usually I have chicken, but I'm trying to break the habit. So all my days are miserable. They're awfully glum and murky. Because I'm really not enjoying much this giving up cold turkey. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Chicken. It makes me cock a hoop. I love it in a sarnie. I love it in Campbell's soup. I love chicken in a burger. I love chicken liver patty. Or with a nice green salad and a soya milk cream latte. Spam, 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 spam. You could offer me spam, or ham, or lamb, but you will mostly find, although it all looks lovely, I've got chicken on me man. In a hot madras curry with a pashwari naan, you can try Vindaloo if you think you're the man. Chicken chow mein is fine, be it said, or a creamy smoked korma with a tasty naan bread. Eggs, 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 scrambled with bacon or fried, poached on toast or softly boiled. All of these I've tried, though hard boiled eggs with my might. I really can't condone. But best of all, I like them when they're fully grown. A sticky lemon chicken to give a bit of zest. I love oven ready chicken, but free range are the best. So, if you see me in a corner looking quite forlorn, it's cost me chicken masala has turned out to be corn. Veggie, 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 veggie. I ain't turning veggie. Guess that's where the chicken now is <coughs> looking slightly edgy. Chicken, 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 chicken. I love plucking chicken. Thank you. This is a new one. It's called There's a Room in My Head. There's a room in my head I keep only for you and it's furnished with trust and a love that is true. There's an old easy chair and a fire burning low where I can sit dreaming when there's nowhere to go. I sit in that room and I think about life since you became my husband and I was your wife. I think of things we've done and places we've been, people that we know and sights we have seen. And there in my room where nobody goes, there are things locked away that no one else knows. And on that old shelf, far too precious to share, our special little secrets all wrapped up with care. That quiet little room only lives in my mind and it's all imagination and emotions entwined. There's shared memories, some funny, some serious and silly little jokes only we could find humorous. There's a room in my head I keep only for you and it's there that I go if I feel a little blue. So if the world gets hard, the remedy's tried and true. I slip into my little room and I think about you. Romance. As we get older, it is often the case that our partners may develop irritable vowel syndrome. Gone are the days when a faux pas is greeted with a smile, a comment, soft sod, and a playful punch to the arm. Many years later, in our house, we now see the reversal of climate change. The polar ice clap caps are no longer melting. The glaciers are no longer disappearing. As a wrong word is spoken, we are told we are simply not listening. This is when I hear the howling icy winds swirling around the house. No matter what the weather forecast, in our house there is a cold front coming from the east, the west, the north, even the bloody south. Perhaps I overstate things, but there have been times when we've had a difference of opinion 
I found myself putting on another jumper and banking up the fire. I hunker down and seek protection from the icy blasts by sheltering in a huge drift that covers our settee. Questions as to why I'm wearing a parka are raised. In my head, I realise that I'm recreating Scott's epic journey to the pole. Eventually, after battling the storms, I become Titus Oates. I utter the immortal words, I'm just going outside and maybe some time. As the last icy blast occurs, I hear the immortal words, go on then, off to the bloody pub as usual. My first steps are faltering as I bend against a howling wind that quite quickly disappears. I feel warmth and realise it is sunny and I am wearing a jumper and a parka. Yes, I think. I may be some time. Okay, as we moved into May, we were all excited. We were sort of, um, it was all new to us. And we did two, we did two live streams in May. Uh, the first clip is from the first one. Uh, so please enjoy uh, Liz Searle, Ben Bradshaw, Dave Cook, Norman Redmond, Esther Femen, and Pete Cullum. Yeah. Blue Byros. Jack only likes Blue Byros. He signs in at reception easily, confidently, straight away if there's a blue biro there. But black biros are difficult for Jack. He has to have a couple of goes, a run-up to write in his name. Leslie sometimes swaps them on purpose when he comes in. She reckons he'll get used to black. Leslie is a pill. Jack is autistic, keen, friendly, good at his job. I sympathise. I really hate blue biros. I can't stand having the tops on the end. Then Helen brings in a box of purple biros. I love them. For a receptionist in an art centre, this is the best I'm going to get. Beautiful doodles, my notes look creative, phone messages, less plain. Jack is absolutely horrified. Purple biros! I give him a blue one to keep. You have this one, Jack. Do You by Benjamin Bradshaw Do you ever feel like you're falling? Gravity is pulling you, tugging at your existence. Falling so fast you find it hard to breathe, hard to notice the blurred worlds, the ones that you fly past, a signal to stop. But keep heading down. Do you ever feel like laughing? Giggle after pathetic giggle behind a stone face, blue and rigid from the act. Feel the joke, live the joke, you are the joke. Laugh at all things hopeful. Do you ever feel like your head's an office? Secrets stored in folders, memories clogging up the shredder, living to a deadline, grasping for a break, trying slowly to understand. Do you ever feel like a burden? Like fresh filth on a new clean sofa, or a stain in a friendship, a weight upon a feather. Tell them not to waste their time. The paths I'll always walk alone. Do you ever feel like your head hurts? A pain no drug can ease, no tablet can calm the blow or numb the madness of a loud subconscious, a constant banging in the skull of art we smile from. I found ready sat on sofa in living room debating whether we're using FaceTime or Zoom. Our tablets balanced on table precariously. Are you happy with that angle? Seriously? It takes a time to make the connection. Wife wipes down the device for fear of infection. After a while, they come into view. I think they've already had a few. They mutter something like, can you hear me? Then do a bottoms up and high five virtually. We sit together like on Mr and Mrs. It's not long before the men are off for their pisses. Wine bottle well hidden, not in view. It'll be harder to tell that we've had a view too. Spielberg will have a duck fit when we slip out of frame. Happens loads when there's a hint of a game. We sweat a lot at the thought of a pub quiz spot, but cheat on our phones just out of shot. Women whinge at the blokey buddy banter, complain that in lockdown her man doesn't understand. The girls witter as the blokes look bored. When talking about football, the lads get ignored. The call degenerates as we get more pissed. Start recalling best films like The Exorcist. 
Try to remember the great box set that she thought was great, but he didn't get. We laugh at jokes that in the morning won't be funny and boast about how we're saving so much money. Remember laughing at old comics like Tony Slattery, but the night ends abruptly when we run out of battery. Okay, thanks very much. A shot. I've no idea if it's to do with um, everything that's happening these days, or maybe just because I'm a flaming lunatic, is it? One or the other. Uh, it's called In a Dream. This celebration day had finally come. I look and can see your vacant loneliness. Though the room was filled to overflowing and you were wearing your favourite flowered dress. A mask set upon your face, a preferred disguise, experienced from a hundred different times. No one sees that they are in their dream, but I see you as you are here in mine. Thank you. Hiya, um, I'm Esther. So, uh, exclusion zone. The atom split at February's end, on the green land unnoticed, the blast threw everyone back. Smaller than cells, able to slip between the chasms in our skin, those most silent spots winking in the sunlight, that catch the stray words that fall from faceless mouths, all piled up, and the blast shook them loose, to run from the air, sit, Lay down as the chatter ripples up, sitting at the top of your neck, the dark matter conjured from living. Away from the nuclear lakes that were once things with names, in the household corner, there the words make home. They shriek with joy. I was once described as a, as a failed punk rocker. I think it was me that said that, mind. Uh, well, there's a poem that's uh, all about my time as a, as a failed punk rocker back in the late 70s. I could have been such a great punk, but no, I just wasn't anarchistic enough. But there's still time, so, so watch this space. This is called, I Wouldn't Be Seen Dead in a Disco. One, two, three, four, dagger, 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 da, 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 da. I was there in 76, the pistol said be an anarchist. I ripped my shirt, I spiked my hair, I looked a prat, but I didn't care. So hey, ho, let's go. I wouldn't be seen dead in a disco. Have a white light and spit on the floor. We're going underground with the jam once more. The cops fighting miners, a three day week. Power cuts, the future looked bleak. A poor teenager with no choice. Punk rock just gave us a voice, so hey, ho. Let's go, I wouldn't be seen dead in a disco Have a white riot and spit on the floor We're going underground with the jam once more I got a new rose, I got it good Just like the dam said they knew that I would I'm still a punk rocker though, it's 40 years on Ranting at the world with me, slippers on So hey ho, let's go I wouldn't be seen dead in a disco Have a white riot and spit on the floor We're going underground with the jam once more Dagger 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 da 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 Hey, thank you and good night Brilliant. In May we had some uh, fantastic shows, we had two brilliant, brilliant shows and we had some fantastic special guests. Um, so in the next clip you're going to see one of our special guests, one of my favourite poets, the brilliant Matt McAteer. Uh, we've then got Howard Shaw um, and then we've got another pretty decent spoken word performer, the marvellous J.B. Barrington. Enjoy. It's only a suggestion, now that we're older, Maybe for goalie all day, go seek out some culture, glimpse some beauty. Before the carnage and debauchery, the groom to be glares at me, the best man stays categorically. This is the way it's going to be a weekend in the capital, getting kettled. Images of tenors plunging into thongs, vomit, spunk and blood, incoherent drunken songs. A weekend in the capital, getting kettled. A weekend in the capital getting squeezed by the party police. Don't know how we ended up there, smoking cigars, guzzling fine wine, obnoxious, loud, incongruous, like a pun in a broad G headline. The black rings around the group's eyes, the product of nature, cheap speed and alcohol. The barman's flown from mascara, more exotic pharmaceuticals. A gay crash's chin stroking conversation, an exhibition at the Hayward. An anodyne is detection about Emin before the best man's behaviour goes wayward, eyebrows raise, heads shake. 
Their expression says it all. Put this straw back between your teeth and fuck off back up north. But I can't stop staring at his mate's hair. It's angled like a hatchet in his brain. I'm forever a maraca shaking bug-eyed bez against their Nuria Van Fontaine. I'm not of their breed, never going to share their stimulating and enlightened dialogue. Destined for Speaker's Corner Sunday morning, throwing breakfast at the demagogues. A weekend in their capital, it's claustrophobic, no exit, no entry. No escape from the preponderance of pissheads, no invitations from the gentry. A weekend in the capital, getting kettled. We must take heed. We are truly wondrous things, we human beings. We cut, we bleed, we heal, we touch, we kiss, we care. We are creatures of this world we live in. We can't blame the pangolin. We have to care. We have to be aware. We are not alone. We share this air, our own. We have a choice. We must now have a voice. We have to stop being materialistic. We have to get the politicians to be realistic. We have to think of everyone. We must look after this planet before we pass it on. We must listen to the one inside our head. One day, we'll all be dead. Thank you. I'm doing a couple of poems for Jim Igoes away with words yeah Jim yeah J Jim hi, hi go no not Hugo not he no Jim hi go Jim the little fella from Hull you know him poet guy yeah him he's asked me to do it he's got a oh just hang on all right just do a few how's it going Jim thanks for asking me to do you didn't ask me, did you? You told me to do some poems again for you on a, yeah, away with words. Live stream. Hull. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I'll do a couple of poems for you. For free. Free. Not getting anything for it. A couple of poems. I'm a bit busy as well, actually, Jim, to be honest with you. But I can fit this in, obviously, because we're friends. A couple of poems. I love you. This is for you, Jim. I love you like a fly loves a freshly laid shit, like a sick note loves the ill and unfit, like a quick fit loves a snap on toolkit. I love you. Like an undertaker loves the dead, like Dignitas loves a deathbed, like North Korea loves a nuclear warhead. I love you. Like a cat loves to bury its turds, like a drunk loves to slur its words, like ornithologists love their birds. I love you. Like smack loves a toothless smile, like a tube of germaloids loves a pile, like a Tory loves a tags exile, I love you. Like the arms trade loves illegal wars, like atheists love dinosaurs, like an agrophobic loves the indoors, I love you. Quite fitting that at the moment, isn't it? Like the human bowel loves regularity, like the rich love the poor giving more to charity, like a traffic warden loves unpopularity, I love you. Not a quick one for me, wife's turned vegetarian. My wife's turned vegetarian, she's all McCartney meat free. No more candlelit dinners for two, McDonald's or KFC. My wife's turned vegetarian, the fridge is full of tofu. No fairground burgers, no frankfurters, a boiled ant to dive into. My wife's turned vegetarian, it appears there's no reprieves and no gravy boat to keep afloat, a meat pie less plate of peas. My wife's turned vegetarian, there's an aftertaste of smugness across the tea table, cos I'm unable to discuss types of couscous. Turns out she's turned pescatarian and eats fish but still meat free. So we're on a winner for a candlelit dinner with a Friday chippy tea. But alas, she won't go near the pork. It makes her feel quite sick. I've had some vertebrae removed so I can suck on my own. My wife's turned vegetarian. Stay safe. Have a good evening. Cheers. Okay, your next clip from there brings you Becky Fawcett, Matt Nicholson and Johnny Moorhead. It's the Skunk Thought Poet Laureate here. I thought I'd do a little film poem to bring you some cheer. You on your beige and basic lockdown. It seems anybody who's anybody, and I am anybody, 
the scump ups depending on me right now is putting out videos to bring cheer to the huddled masses. Footballers wearing shirts full of their sponsors' logos are sending video messages to the elderly. <sighs> Wonderful. And pop stars are bravely live streaming their latest songs to you with a helpful caption at the end telling you that it's available to buy on iTunes. <sighs> so selfless. I especially like the bloke dressed as Spider-Man who's sending out video greetings with a poster for his driveway cleaning company clearly in shop. Beautiful. Well done. So very selfless. I myself took a Baileys and Harding, Hardy, whatever, body lotion I got a few Christmases ago round to my neighbour Jeff. I shared a photo of me handing it over on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pin Interest, <laughs> LinkedIn, and to Peter Levy at Look North. Bring him some cheer as well. Yes, altruism is alive and well in this house, folks. So, here's a poem to lift your spirits, and it's called You Wish You Live Like This. Here we go. Look at me, I'm live streaming. See the fancy backdrop behind me, the cerebral books I own. Go on, scan the spines. Yes, scrutinize my lifestyle. The paintings of my own genius that show that I'm sophisticated. Oh yes, my status makes you anxious. What am I saying? You don't know what I'm saying. You're too busy gawping at my artfully placed knickknacks. You'll screenshot them later and post them on pin interest. My meticulously placed objet. It says so much about me. That I'm smarter than you. I'm a quarantine da Vinci. I'm the new plague Shakespeare. I'm live streaming. I'm live streaming in front of artifacts you don't have, but suddenly you need. I'm a Holbein portrait come alive. An art ambassador sighted with the things you envy. Oh, so much envy. How the other half lives, you sick primitives. You virus hybrids. You wish you lived like this. You wish you lived like this. You wish you lived like this. You wish. Well, I'm off now to meet Sir Jim Radcliffe, Bono and Dominic Cummings down in their secret underground lair. Oops. Probably said too much. Bye. I wrote the words back of my hand in black ink on the back of my hand. It wasn't planned. I wouldn't normally self-label like that and I've no predilection for a tattoo but from where I stand it might just be my only truth because the hand in question is very much attached to all the other bits I know as mine I can't shake it off though I have tried and I'm not looking after it for an imaginary friend and as I have no plans to begin a short ill-starred career as a thief in Saudi Arabia I am stuck with it like it or not, the bond with this hand is permanent. But then, I hear you say, asking another question entirely, can you be sure that it is in fact a hand, and not some foot or a bullet or a novel? I stop dead, and then I choose to raise two fingers, and I say that this hand is defined by its function by what it does and with how much success, how it touches and holds and squeezes like nothing else in my armoury can manage. And we move on to the thorniest of all your questions, the one where your face looks smug like an alligator, and you ask how I can be sure that I have written on the back of said hand. And with a flash, as bright as Einstein in these eyes, I say to you, listen, pal. I've done the hard yards. I've proved to you that this is, in fact, a hand, and I'm right to claim it as mine. And when it comes to matters of perspective, of practice and of pragmatism, I reckon I know people like you 
just like I know the back of my hand. Hello there. My name is Johnny Murhead. I'm the border boy. This one's called Culchi Requiem. For those of you that don't speak Northern Irish, Culchi means farmer. So, Culchi Requiem. Our stock were reared on the island. A lesser spotted lot. Born sticks in hands. Bred into farming. Practically herded out the old doll's womb. Planted and sprouted in the soil of our ancestors. You couldn't do any of our jobs as a young fella. Could read the fields at ten, but hardly read the paper till twenty. Saying that, it's not like I was born in a bubble off the Loch Earn. Must have been a right balls for me man and dad, though. Building our house in the aisle. But they did. The bridge was up long before I was barely a glint in me dad's jap. No TV. So, a queer crowd of seed. Siblings, saplings flourished brightly. Just happened to be, I was the lad who didn't leave. The plant that couldn't leaf. Pot-bound, browned knees clung to the roots of our forgotten family tree. Our home on the hill, payday emerald patches as far as the eye could see. Tiled mossy grasslands, thorned hedges, blinding olive green. But even Mother Nature's beauty can taunt you, if she stares you out long enough. A sprout doesn't know if it needs pruning or replanting. Sure, it just grows upwards and outwards. Bit of water. It's not hard. Basic biology. Ma would force me out to the dances on the loch. I know, me, dancing. Catch yourself on. That was never going to match my chemistry. Any more misty morning. Rainy sunrise. I never took to this whole LED moonlight carry on. Sure, our old fags better than I could dance. I didn't know this was my only chance to find better soil. The weed and the rose bush. Left to wither alone. Got bad of me own. Tried stabbing holes to outstretch my roots. Sure, I wasn't planted flat. I drooped, bent stemmed. Expectation weighed me right leaning. The garden I once boom bloomed upon proudly has uprooted and relocated without me. Seasons come and seasons go, while the overgrowth of our isle tucks me in. This is a cold flower bed to wake up and uncross the eyelids for. Dampened mould within my wick. Drips of condensation tear stream my bedroom windy. I'm a plant without water. No seed. The name of my family garden will die with me. Thank you. Okay, you're watching A Word With Words 2020 compilation show on Boxing Day evening. Our May show was absolutely immense. We had some brilliant, brilliant talents. This next clip has got our special guest, Jenny Berry, Helen Shea, Mike O'Brien, Robin Welsh, and our second special guest, the brilliant Stephen Watt. I'm going to kick off with one on communication because I feel that people are communicating differently in a good way, people are actually talking to each other and I'm hoping after lockdown that it carries on and we actually just say, aya, because I think it's rude when you're on your phone and you just ignore people, especially when you know them. So I'm going to kick off with this one. Talk to me. 
Talk to me through eyes, not screen. Don't miss life to tag I scream. Don't scoop me or cold facade to then online misplace your guard. Don't talk the talk if talks on text. Don't walk on by if swiping next. Talk to me to my face. Authenticate small talk. Talk to me with engaged tone, no hunchback clenching mobile phone, screen time obsessional stalker, yet muted mutt dog daytime walker. Don't eye me up to then ignore an adult conversation. Don't deal a hand of demure to tweet a meaningless midnight declaration. Talk to me like it's innate in the human race, like our mental lexicon hasn't been replaced. Talk to me, meaningless memoirs outside our local pub, regurgitated, outdated gossip, just like gossip should. Talk to me by the side of Bridgewater Canal, amongst the orange tide, let's lock eyes and do what the people, people know how. Talk to me. Another sea poem. Reasons to be dead, part one. Only first let's take off the mask. Tough guys like Trump don't wear one. It's your duty to be dead if it pays enough. The economy tanks the longer you are alive. Think not of a second wave, but a second term. And I'm doing such a great job. Think of saving the planet, little lefty. All your carbon footprints erased from the sands of time. But don't take too long over it. Think of the NHS. In a short, sharp shock of death, that's the way to do it, says Mr Punch as he slugs you with his cosh. Such a change from bashing up Judy in lockdown. After all, isolation is so boring. You must agree, surely. Isn't death a lot more exciting than online yoga and waiting in food queues? A quick death and you'll never face the Zimmer frame. And you'll make such a lovely corpse, trust me. You'll put them all to shame in that mass grave. And we'll be sure to play that planard track that you like so much to see you off. And if that's not reason enough for you, think of the Great Depression to come. All that suffering you'll save yourself and others. It's your duty to think of others. It's your duty to be dead. And here's a final offering of inoculable COVID poetry. This poem cannot exist. These words are too rampant. They lie here waiting for prey, pounce on the innocent reader. You perhaps, dare you read? Dare you take these words in so they are no longer mine, but your words? They pass between us like a virus, refusing to self-isolate, tearing away any mask, then spreading their contagion of meaning, their poison rash of emotion. There is no vaccine, no antibody. Read it and you've caught it, like the ball that never reaches the ground. Covid poetry, beyond control and lethal. Many thanks. I've been Helen Shea, RIP, and despite all that gallows humour twaddle, stay well. We can trust in an expert who's in his own home, with his Skype, or his Zoom, or his camera phone, in front of a bookcase that's filled up with lines of journals and volumes, all with perfect spines. If he's got stuff like that, then he's clever indeed. And he'll never get bored when he's all that to read. And he looks so calm and we feel so distressed. So we'll do what he tells us to do for the best. And the government minister, he's at home too. And we have to give credence to his point of view. As he sat at a desk with a lamp and a globe. He's a man of the world with a mind that can probe all the issues we have. And he'll deal with them well. And that bookshelf behind him, we can almost smell the leather-bound volumes of Hansard on there. So we're safe to entrust him with our welfare. But here's a man standing outside in the street, in his casual clothes, with trainers on his feet. He's questioned and filmed from two metres away. 
but there's no real import to what he's got to say. There's no fancy dress. There's no fancy desk or a bookcase on view. So his words can't be seen to have any value. His opinion means little when all said and done. He's a vox pop, amusement. He's only for fun. There you go. Um, that's bookcases, what I cocked up in the middle by saying fancy dress. Right. Do you know when you turn the TV on and you're faced by, uh, with a 26 year old man with teeth that just don't look real. They're so white. Ridiculously white. They don't look natural. Anyway, this is about them. It's called Millennial Shit. Hope you enjoy it. Bit of fun. Mr. Strictly come Love Island with his shaved chest and balls. Misogynistic breakfast morning glory as your mother calls. Ed Sheeran shits in your ear while you're tanning your ass. And it's two times a lady in a love triangle farce. As crabs to be passed are a thing of the past. So no one cares who shat who last. And plucking eyebrows for the chicks. Fucking four red Botox at 26. Morals and integrity in your Calvin Klein pants. You've got no pecs, only chest implants. And being famous, having shit for brains. You act all posh, but you come from stains. Celebrities are thick as fuck. They try to be classy, but they're common as muck. You see Ken and Barbie, they're all the rage. Well he ain't ready real. It's all the stage with their fake fucking noses and fake fucking tits. But don't do it in my name. These millennial shits. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed that one. Because I love it. My uh, second poem comes from a book which is called Mixtape and uh, it's a little uh, look at every single reggae gig you'll ever attend in Scotland. This one's called Ochter Machte Reggae. A door opens and then the smog hits you. In the centre of the haze, half closed eyes and boomerang grins Varnishes every face and samba trainer shamble rock Side to side on strange smelling floorboards Where the roaches and ash will be brushed and shoveled away Before the clubbers arrive White man dreadlocks, swamp monsters adorning whalers' t-shirts are fascinated with these floorboards, dyed in green, yellow and red stage lights. Heads are bowed in unreservedly holy luck, stocking two smoking <laughs> joints, zonked mode. Oh. Reggae rumbles out the sound system, shaking the merch stall beads and weed saturated jackets into an uplifting chorus of Here we, here we, here we, upstroke, chick, chick, go until the bones flood with bass, blood bubbles in the brain, and love is stained all over your glorious face. Cheers. We had one show in June, it was a fantastic show, crammed full of talent. In our first clip you're going to see Clint Wassling, Dave Attrill, Tom Atkinson and Joe Pahulka. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five generations awestruck by the gravity of this mechanism. To queue and climb the steps, we choose our seats and wait with trepidation between heartbeats. Movement slowly accelerates. The roar of wood on rail accumulates and screaming punctuates descent until the nose plunges and the plume of water arcs and thrills drop by drop onto us, our neighbours, mums and dads, clandestine lovers. Finally the vessel judders. The splash boat hauled to home by jute. We disembark and watch the next crew ride the water chute. Radios. Radios speak to you with a crackling voice of voyeuristic hypnotism. Manipulative music becomes the all over peeping Tom, penetrating your instincts while stealing you away from what you thought was alive to your eyes. Sexual priorities adrift across seas of isolation. 
like ghost ships sailing into the swirling stormy mist to forget, to never come back until the song's last notes are sung, or the last lunchtime headlines read. Or you could just turn the blooming thing off and go shopping. shakes were all that was left from the muddling partakes of the mind's outward breath i can't remember the fall from summer the nun tingling was like footsteps all over mine just now crawls around the shore until another asks a question about the brain paw i can't answer it's buried deep a part of me knows i need its sleep the woven cosmos to the hairy fields the ghostly lows to the sword and shield I got to see and know, the forceful will wilts away the eyes, like I came close to the other side of the glass, and sights to my surprise. It stays with me at night, blows easily away in the day, but a glimmer nonetheless, and it's very hard to say. Harder still is the fact that it is factless, I feel life's more than it was, yet still senseless. Sometimes I can't grasp, but with that take off the mask, I realise it's all now in the past. The power that it bears comes from footsteps on the stairs, and the times I feel as though I could fall are hardly there. They don't bother me at all. Okay, thank you very much.
Brilliant stuff. This is the Away With Words 2020 compilation show. This is our second clip from June when we had one of my favourite poets uh, on the scene at the moment, the brilliant Sophie Sparham as our special guest. Uh, and in this clip, we've also got Terry Cochran and Pete Joel. We're joyriding with Dennis Skinner. Everyone must spend some time being bad. After 49 years, God knows you've earned it. Choose the car you've always wanted to steal. Let me smash the window. Outside the pubs, men grind together as regular as teeth in the jaws of one who is always hungry. We ride past figures who spray their lovers against walls like graffiti. Tag the city with names they want the night to know. Past those that vomit their truth into drain pipes. Mouth as open as goalposts shooting for home. This isn't what I wanted to show you. But understand, we grow differently down here in the cracks. Are always waiting to be weeded out or burnt by daylight. Leave our legacies on newspaper headlines. Are far more interesting dead. I've learned to pray by pressing my foot down on the accelerator and holding my breath. I know I should spend a lifetime repenting for my sins, flog myself daily to make up for the people I have borderlined with tire marks. But you, my sweet, there's nothing left for you to do. I can't see anything changing St. Peter's mind. If you, a passenger of sin, were to lean back Put your feet on the dashboard, close your eyes and whisper, dear God, I'm coming. Thank you. Mother is rushing, she's combing her hair, calling time for school at the foot of the stairs, but teachers don't teach you, they don't really care, it's another bloody Monday. But you can see right through their cunning old plan and how they've retarded the new common man. Denied him the tools to be all that I can, it's another bloody fun day. Made you believe you were part of some tribe, history written by some faceless scrab, but you're not willing to accept the bribe, it's another bloody Sunday. There are people in places where you've never been, brutally told to stop causing a scene, never becoming what they could have been, it's another bloody mad day. There are children afraid of the future we made, killing themselves because they can't make the grade. Boys on street corners flashing their blade. It's another bloody bad day. There are two-legged pokers selling your soul. You're just a wackos they've put to the wall. Once they decided there's no need for you all. It's another bloody sad day. And granddad's alone in his room and he's crying. He's so ashamed that he's just give up trying. His tired old eyes, they're no longer prying. Nothing much left to say. And God is a runaway father who left you, giving up trying to save and protect you, turning his back as he tries to forget you, no longer a need to pray. And the earth has grown restless and she's scratching her back. She's on the verge of a counter-attack, demanding her dues it's time for payback, preparing to clear us away. The last time I kissed your lips, first time I kissed your lips, the only time. A moment of joy and communion, unplanned, spontaneous, outside all rules, a taste for you filled my being. A memory, perhaps odd molecules still dance around my tongue, flavours complex dance into a smile, redolent resonant delight, memories to treasure, for as long as I remain, memories perhaps to revisit, repeat, return to, one day, any day, every day, you might choose. Okay, July, the sun was out, we were still in lockdown, we were feeling frustrated, but we were still writing, we still had a voice, and we were still performing and sharing. This is our clip from July. Uh, we've got Kathy Davis, Graham Rhodes, Jemima Mitra, Linda Owen, and Mary Dickens. 
I want to tell the story about the two boys I saw at a Pigeon Detectives concert, stacked together like a totem pole, arms spread wide while the audience milled under them like clumsy, bumbling ants. It was a crazy, hecked up, coked up, wearing sunglasses inside kind of crowd. One friend had pointed to another and gestured him to climb aboard. Fast, 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 loud, 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 the tiny, sweaty room had painted black walls and the floor was still tainted with the traces of poorly mopped up vomit. That stink of the illegal vodka never left the premises. I don't believe it ever will. The band were as mad as the crowd were, all curls and leather, emptying water bottles over their faces, spitting it back out at the crowd where it hung in the air like mist for a few nanoseconds before settling on us like dew. The totem pole slipped over a lot and the boy on top would splay on the floor. The supporting lad would stretch his arm down to retrieve him from the crowd, then he'd crouch down like a kid playing leapfrog to let him straddle his shoulders, making sure they made the most out of the two-minute song. It was a good song. The band were playing I Found Out and half the crowd were only there that night in the hopes of hearing that one song. So the current of the pit crashed forwards and backwards up and down, but no one in that moment minded claustrophobia. The brothers must have fallen over about five times, but they stood up and reconvened, even when I could see blood trickling down from a split lip, something that might only look like the result of a brisk wind but would undoubtedly swell up huge by the morning. But the top stayed on the shoulders, arms punching out sporadically, out of rhythm as he tried to balance on the top of the bottoms, jiggling, jumping, precarious dancing. We sung together, out of tune, chanting like a football crowd, arms reaching forwards towards the stage in a desperate demonstration of attention-seeking energy, going out with, yes, you're going out with, and then the screams and claps and cheers. Thanks for that, said the top to the bottom after being let down. Now you're all right, mate, you're all right, said the bottom to the top. The band was still basking in praise and glory, handing back the phones they'd nicked, engaging in the banter that I always felt sure was planned in advance, although maybe I'm cynical about all effortless social engagement. And the top looked back to the bottom and he said, in a voice like a child on his first day of school, that same innocence and endearingness, a question neglected by most adults to avoid the inevitability of potential awkwardness. What's your name? And I knew then that they weren't brothers, and I knew then that they weren't friends, but I also knew that for those two minutes and eleven seconds they had been. In crowds like this, you rub against pe skin and taste people's sweat more than you do when you're fucking, but it's platonic and beautiful and ugly and sexual and meaningful in ways that extend beyond the body, and the bruises and split lips never seem to hurt, and instead they become trophies, like love bites or skin knees. Cool. The Romans had landed in Britain and were building aqueducts, villas and roads. They were doing quite well with the conquering on poor Britons who only wore woad. Then they came to the boundaries of Yorkshire, where the Iceni ruled as top tribe. They were led by a queen called Boudica, that the Romans thought they could bribe. So they sent us some wine in amphorae, roast dormouse in sesame seeds, but the Iceni were brought up on black pudding, served with tatties and turnips and mead. They looked at the Roman food parcel and poked it with swords and with spears, and Boudica stood tall and said to them all, You're not building roads around here? Now the Romans were working to contract and were already late in their deeds. They got lost in a bog down in Thetford and fell in the river in Leeds. Building roads in straight line proved a problem in a country full of grey clouds and mist where no one could see the horizon and it were proving a bit hit and miss. So they sat down and came to agreement to save bloodshed and more double pay. Romans stopped at Boudica's boundary, waved their eagles and then just walked away. And that's why, if you go into Yorkshire, the roads are all bent, twisted and poor, and why it takes hours to travel the length of the A64. Thank you. Just because you cannot feel the heat of the flames does not mean that a house somewhere is not burning. I am trying to put out the fire, and you suggest the bucket I am using is not big enough instead of throwing water yourself. Your criticism means nothing if you are not helping me. My house is on fire. Please help me. When I say I see red, I do not just mean the rectangular BBC banners. Thank you. I dance around it. I try to toss it. I offer it hope and joy. Then I walk away from it. I dodge it when I see it. And then I confront it, look it straight in the eyes, and say you are a lie. I look at what it points at, then its opposite thus the solution. Its negative shall have its positive. Fear whispered in my ear, and came out the other speaking its tender truth. 
I shall not fear, no, no, it is not twisted. It is blunt and precise. It isn't telling lies, just a puzzle. Some detective clue. Revealing its gift of answers to me from you. Is fear not our caveman's survival instincts? That thus we cannot truly bury, even as time evolves. It's a part of life, it has a voice. And I have a voice through the journey of earthly life. I will take but surely give to this land of plenty. I breathe each sun and sleep with the moon and stars. But I shall contribute and conquer this thing called life. So fear, are you not my companion, direction out of the dark? Although you have caused me to cry a swelling of my soul and caused my head to dip so very low, shrouded in brick walls, I take you in my hand, that fist of human strength, choke out your hiding answers to it all. I need to breathe, I need to listen to my heart, a constant beat in tune with my feet, walk the land, the global land. Tell your story and leave it behind, for life is a gift that you eventually leave behind and put down. Someone picks it up, someone reads its history of tales, memoirs, your biography, poetry. I hope it is a book. Our love is too fast for an email. It can't be condensed to a tweet. It's handy to Skype, but it's only a hype compared to the thrill when we meet. It can't be configured in pixels, reminders of places we've been. It can't be summed up in a soundbite, displayed on an LCD screen. Our love is much more than mere data. Too complex, too messy, too fraught. It can't be backed up in a server or plugged in a USB port. We can't close the distance between us. There are too many miles to transcend. These digital fragments are all that we have and all we can do is click send. Thank you. You're watching Word of Words 2020 compilation show. There's a couple of clips from a brilliant, brilliant show that we did in August. Coming up, we've got Emma Milner and Kev Bamboo. Hi, it's great to be back again. This is my poem, These Days. I love ice cream days. Those dripping down your hand days, seagulls swooping down days, down by the beach days. I love those days when you don't have to get up, those plump your pillow with a thump days and cover your bed in books days, the world can suit itself days. Then there's the reaching out to friends days, the recommend you go there days that turn out to be amazing days, those making memories days. I love those watch TV all day days, I'm glad I've still got prime days, the write all day days, the writer's block days, the not quite enough to go out days just before payday. Maybe you're living through some lonely days. There's days that we can all admit we've been afraid. Daily crusades to keep up when we've been let down. Days that got me where I am today. These have been the strangest days. Social distancing from day to day. Days that left us angry. Days that left us sad. Days when we said we made it and the days when we wondered how we had. Somewhere, normal is waiting for another day. For better days. For reaching out to friends days that turn out to be amazing days. Days when we know we're going to be okay. Thank you very much. Cliques against cliques. Cliques, cliques, you can't stand the fucking clique. The biggest struggle trying to be kind of unique. Keeping up with the Joneses and false pretenses. You can't be in love with everyone's sentences. Cliques, cliques, then what's the point of free speech? If all we do is nod and agree, a human quasi-leech. Sometimes agree, sometimes hate you, mate. This is the beauty of open debate. Cliques, cliques, who the fuck are you? New imposter with your suede shoes all blue. Miss a sign on the door, there's no other here, boy. No suede allowed, only corduroy. 
Cleeks, cleeks, but what about me? What you say should be heard for the world to see. But who gives a shit, agree or not? This is the place to blow your proverbial snot. Cleeks, cleeks, exist in all ways. If you try to fight it, you'll be here for days. Yet really you're in one, you're not so unique. You just exist in the clique against cliques. You're watching Away With Words 2020 compilation show coming to you on Boxing Day evening. Hope you're having a good time. Hope you're enjoying your Christmas. Uh, this is our clip from October and we had some brilliant, brilliant performers. Uh, coming up, we've got Alice Godber, Andy N, Paul Brooks, Ruth Fanshaw, Sue Watling and Susan Darlington. Hi, my name's Alice Godber and I'm going to be reading one short poem today. It's called Forever Young. I've been thinking a lot about life recently. How fleeting and unfair it can be at times. How suddenly you left. Without a hug or a kiss goodbye. Maybe you're too good for this world. So much experience cramped into half a life. But then I smile. You're forever young. Forever in your prime. Forever with that beaming grin. I have no idea what happens when the light goes out. But maybe you're happy. Who knows? Wherever you are. Drinking red wine and lighting up a room. Forever young. Faces evenly spread out. I sit on the train, counting eyelashes when the moon went down for the last time. The second piece is called Faces 2. Studying her quiet face asleep, I could only guess how far she has travelled when the moon went down for the last time. Okay. Picasso. Out of blank space gouge out shapes of apples and light as instruments digs a blister into palm. He cannot afford mistakes. Steadied hand controls citrus bite of wives and mistresses. Strong stink of oxidised linseed oil, resins, ground cork, wood, flour and pigment all pressed together and flattened. In later life, after bulls summed atrocities, if mistakes made disguised, I'll begin again, a head-on challenge. Black eyes carve the shapes, print bold red, yellow and green. A still life instills creation. Beggars believe. A cupped palm reaches out to you, stench of ingrained clay, stale piss, rotten beer, water into wine, bloody marks of stigmata dribble down his arm, pissed in a vision of himself, in a suit of polished armour, a costly scarlet cloak, him mounted on a richly plumed and comparisoned white charger, two esquires in rich liveries walk at each side, twenty lustful lasses Dance before him, beat tambours, rudely play with twenty half-men, half-goats. A crowd of howling beggars follow him, nor salted dried martel beef. Frowns into smiles, he draws his sword, cuts his rich scarlet cloak in many pieces, hands them to the beggars. Biddy to the young. You've planted fresh delight in these eyes. You sprout visions again, as when I was a young lass. You breathed through my cold embers, stroked warmth into this thin skin. My face plumps and reddens, as your hands find flesh for my angled skull. My limbs begin to dress with buds and colour for your lustful eyes. Perhaps these changes are only in your eyes, and this puddle reflection may be false, a false spring. All that heals. For the rich silken shimmer of the blue breathing ocean, for the velvet cloaked contours of the adamantine mountains, for the honey gold glow of midsummer sunlight, for the apple cool comfort of leaf shadowed shade. 
with a heart-lifting lilt of well-woven words for the life-illuminating insight of mind-stirring story for the warm, empathic embrace of soul-moving melody for the exquisite, timeless tapestry of heartfelt harmonies for the courage-boosting compassion of faithful friends for the spirit-strengthening solace of faith-filled fellowship for every gift of grace for all that heals the heart for all that salves the soul good and loving Lord, I thank you I envy you, Octopus, because if I had eight legs I'd get there faster. And with each one having a brain, I'd have all the answers. And with all the answers, I'd make less mistakes, maybe less heartbreaks, like choosing the wrong side of bed or chasing after a well-dressed man. I envy you, Octopus, because if I had eight arms, I'd play amazing guitar, could accompany myself on piano. I envy you because you swim with grace are sleek, fleet, streaking through water, while I stumble round on clumsy feet, brewing octopus envy. You're a galaxy missing its cow, mysterious kleptomaniac, myth for the making, object of poems. You are an unraveled labyrinth. Phase two. The descended shadow I cast crawls up the walls of the building and looms over the cityscape unseen. The focused likeness of me fractures in long exposure and I become absent in the final gelatin silver print. The fingerprints I leave in books and the lipstick smeared on cups are wiped before I've left the room. Until I shrug off my blouse, step out of my skirt and shoes and make you look and see. I use a hairpin to unpick the lock of a display cabinet in the city central museum. I pull out the taxidermied foxes that are dressed in waistcoats and mice that are playing poker. I crush my limbs into the cabinet, my feet rammed against the sides and my hair trailing on the tiles. With my eyes wide and watchful and my teeth bared in a snarl, I make you look and finally see me. Is the Word with Words compilation show, bringing to you the highlights of our 2020 live stream events. Uh, here's some clips from our November show, which was crammed full of amazingly talented people. In our first clip, we've got Charlotte Oliver, Finn Hall, Francis Golm, Hannah Hodson, and Kenny Cramar. Hi, I've got one new poem that I'd like to read for you tonight. It's called 2020 is a Crust. 2020 is a crust that has formed over me and muffles my mind in a foggy shroud of rising numbers, numbed by tepid tea and wine poured thick against injustice and meagre human contact. I long to share a silence uncushioned by a squinting screen, to slough this shushed skin of semi-sleep and pierce my body into freezing water fresh with glass sharp thoughts and words that dart around like silver moonlit fish. Thank you. They were neither a stone nor a flower, but somewhere in between the answer lay, the hardness of the present, the beauty of the past, suspecting flawed memories, only the stone it seems will last. Troubled conflicts of the present, aching souls that lie within, no happy times to return to, no future dark and grim. Seeking answers, asking questions, it's all these words can do, hoping visionary artists can help to pull us through. When caught between the rock in a hard place, always choose the flower. Because flowers outlive their beauty, their memory remains crucial and yet vital. Colours, scent and name. Like a painting by Frida Kahlo, like a brief from Buddy Guy, something you'll remember sometime before they die. 
As time eclipses memories, choices and decisions like a stone are hard and tough. But all you really needed was a soft and gentle touch. And in between was nothing, just an empty space and timed. Decisions left unfinished, watered down like cheap white wine. Regret not what you have done, only regret the things undone. Because even when it's raining, above it the still is sun. My ex, the physiotherapist. I find it strange when she asks, is it okay if I touch you? Glimpse a tenderness reserved for strangers. A ceremony we've long since dispensed with. Her asexual touch examines me as she explains, relax, relax. We're looking for spaces your body can move into. Her fingers smooth in butterfly strokes from my breastbone out. My breastbone out. Eyes closed. Head tilted. As she maps me. Is there always this much tension? A tone of incredulity as she lifts my arm and notes the poor shoulder mobility and I lay like a paralysed backstroker in a frozen swim pool. This stretches the infraspinitis, she explains. And as we wait for a space to open up, her hands find me as a client, as I am, for the first time, just as stubborn. When to my surprise, so unlike me, my shoulder yields and she pins my wrist to the floor. Aha. And suddenly we were back to how we were. The upper hand hers. Transformation. I am healing, taking steps forward and back, left and right. Growing up and fucking up and fucking men who have the audacity to ask me to meet their needs while they have zero capacity to meet mine. But healing is releasing resentment. It's me who enables them to cross that line. So I let myself fuck up and grow up. We're all just doing our best and in fairness, we're all only human. Just doing our best from our own unique awareness. I'm trusting the process, it's not linear or black and white, there's no need to assign anybody to wrong or right. Instead, giving up the fight, allowing life to unfold, just as the blue sky unfolds into a black night, and I'm travelling through the darkness, fumbling around with limited sight, but morning emerges, greets me with handfuls of insights, leaning into me with arms made from sunlight. Nobody said healing was light, it's not for the faint-hearted. Sometimes I think it would have been easier if I had just never started. People do that, get by just going through the motions, never seeking inside, sailing on the surface, denying an entire ocean beneath their familiar paddle boat, dependent on delusional distractions to keep them afloat. When seas get rough, I sometimes watch these people in envy. If I hadn't cared, never wanted authentic, intimate love, who would I then be? A survivor, yes, but not much more. And jumping off the safety of shore, swimming down to the depths of my core, facing stuff that's easier to ignore, facing stuff that once would have dragged me into the night with no torch before. I have the tools today. I'm growing up and fucking up, transforming in my own messy way. Hi there, my name is Kenny Cromar, and this poem comes to you from Lincoln. There are seven days in a week, and this poem is for each one of these days. It is a poem of hope written during these troubled times. It is called New Horizons. Can you sense the new horizon? 
as the fog begins to clear. Relieving the doldrums, said the captain, a new course we will steer. Can you feel the breeze as it fills our mortal sails? Feel the sense of optimism, whatever else prevails. A ship is full of hope as we sail for unknown seas. There's no need to worry, please stand at ease. Here's our second clip from our November show, which includes Lee Crossland, Mick Pettinger, Paul Chaplin, Gina Hobbs, Richard Harris, and Ross Ponton. Lay of the land. Raven coloured rivers roam, black treacle traverses, peach peaks and shadowy ravine, a swirling scent of home. Weaving, wefting wonder of subsidian syrup flow, over continual contoured shape, shadow enhancing nature's glow. Streams stop and surrender to fall and cascade, cascading, exploring, expanding, yet over spills and lays. Entangling tendrils born, brought by deep brown lakes, carefully closing with ease around pink and peaks, and tender thoughts in a breeze. The unexplored landscape, new territory, new geography, all appealing, exciting, carefully cast. Pure cho choreography, no fault lines to cause chaos, no undercurrent or hidden arm, just perfect physical prose. Exuding serenity, beauty and charm. Silence, simplicity, the landscape lays. True power and poetry. Colour beneath ebony waves, warmth, fire and protection, perfect place to arrive, settled to stay, from fire, bound beckon. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed. Bye. One place very familiar is timeless. I stand or sit there and look across the fields up at the sky, a place my friend might be. Back when the houses weren't there across the dike. Existence not slightly in linear time. I can see where we played football with all the other kids in the village. A juncture in vision where we built dens or made slap dab under the swings. Their form is a simple, extremely accurate and functional set of objects. Inanimate material yet meaningful beyond measure. They're in that scene. From my head, the one memory I can't ever forget. My mum and dad flew down, and I flew past them on a day full to the brim with regret. The day after, I'd wish somebody dead. It's the perch I stand on when I'm smoking a cig now, where I always look up at the clouds and the stars, where the world is sensually deprivating, void of movement and without sound. Is it even a comfort? or just a vicinity I naturally become grounded in. Almost like my whole life is there, a place where whatever happens in the world, I can simply be, whether in turmoil or at peace, where death won't be forgotten, where love and memory could be kept. We race down them as kids, me and our Steve, down my dad's back steps. Cheers. A Turkside dyed sky, bleak, but for the specks of light grey in a dark grey sky. From behind my safety specks, the halogen lights shined, Bethlehem-like, on this cold and unforgiving place. No saviour, no messiah, will be born in this land. A man has to save his own soul here. The butterflies of spring and summer have given way to the crows and gulls that bide their time in winter. Sitting atop the buildings like vultures, they peck, peck away at a weakened soul. Thank you. Very the drums beat out. A tongue of flame uncoiled itself like a spring leaping up feral and wild, transforming itself into a crazed animal, a shaman of the night sky, the drums beat out. 
hunt and prowl, prowl and hunt. And the red dragon breathed a primeval roar, spitting a shower of sparks, a cascading veil of crimson ire. Mesmerised they watched, changing their shapes in the flickering, haunting shadows from a huddled bunch to tribal warriors and the drums beat out. Prowl and hunt, hunt and prowl, and the red dragon breathed white heat so intense it seared the bones and scarred the heart. An arc of flame licked the soul of a girl called Joan, scorched the ideas of a revolutionary, an ordinary man, an extraordinary man, and still they stand and watch this fierce, ferocious beast that can turn and twist into life itself, mysterious and mystical as time itself, and the drums beat out, prowl and hunt, hunt and prowl, echoing down a tunnel of time, the crowd bayed, and the crowd bays now, as the feral flames spit and glow and eat the sky, as they cackle and crackle and cast their primeval spell, hunt and prowl, prowl and hunt. Thank you. Change times. Look what they done to our land, ma. Look what they done to our land. When I was 18, I left school. Homeless, no place to go. No idea if there was any help. I'd never heard of housing benefit. Stayed with a sister for a while. Could not live there forever. A newlywed, with a child, a husband, and a mortgage. Got a local paper. Looked for jobs. There were loads. Things were different in 1970. I saw eight jobs I could do. Waitering, cleaning, bar work. I had no experience of anything. I made eight phone calls, got eight appointments for eight interviews. One that afternoon. Another worker knew me, vouched me. When could I start? Any time. Take your coat off, lad. I was offered all eight jobs. I chose two. Could live quite well. Got a bed sit. Then shared a flat. Then had to take care with my money. If I was treated bad at work, not happy, I told them to sod right off. Started somewhere else the next Monday. How things change. Look what they done to our land, Ma. First bonfire night. I stare at the fire, flames flicker in a terrifying yet captivating blaze. My head's in a daze. I look up. The sky above lies dark and still. Down here there's noise everywhere. People are packed in tight. I have no space. I turn. Oh no, there's no one I know. In sight. I panic. Suddenly my dad grips my hand. I feel safe. A rocket suddenly explodes in wonderful colours high above my head. Oh wow, maybe this isn't such a bad place. Okay, this is Word With Words on Boxing Day, our special compilation show bringing in the highlights of 2020's live stream. Our December show, some people got festive, some people didn't. Here are a few of them. We've got Kevin Walker, Mark Rogers, Paul Glazard and Pauline Seawoods. I found a fiver in the snow. I found a fiver in the snow. Well, not in the snow, but just below. Two inches deep, but even so, it was my lucky day, you know. I found a fiver in the snow. I found a fiver in the snow. It wasn't snow, it was ice though, which is harder as you know. I couldn't pick it up and go, and so I kicked it with me toe. It wouldn't give, but even so, I found a fiver in the snow. A fiver is a lot of dough, I found a fiver in the snow. It's finders keepers, don't you know? I set me ducks up in a row 
and bent to give the ice a blow. I found a fiver in the snow. A fiver is a lot of dough. It's too much money to forego. I found a fiver in the snow. And though I gave a mighty blow, I couldn't melt the bleeding snow. I couldn't shift it with my toe. But once you start, you can't let go. I found a fiver in the snow. A fiver is a lot of dough. It's too much money to forego. And I'm a stubborn so and so. I found a fiver in the snow. I noticed it was not yellow, which meant that I could lick the snow. So like an urban Eskimo, in temperatures of five below, I started lapping to and fro. I found a fiver in the snow. A fiver is a lot of dough. It's too much money to forego. And I'm a stubborn so-and-so. So once I start, I can't let go. I found a fiver in the snow. Four hours there with cheeks aglow. Aches and pains you don't want to know. Aggravated lumbago, scabby lips, impetigo, snow burns and frostbite, but even so, I found a fiver in the snow. A fiver is a lot of dough, it's too much money to forego, and I'm a stubborn so and so, so once I start I won't let go. This was my lucky day you know, I found a fiver in the snow. He came to be known as Doc Ted. He was the teddy bear repairman and an expert at his craft. How he might mould and shape some dust-ridden flea bin, much loved cottony at blind-eyed, stuffing-spewing, threadbare bear, was a wonder of restoration to behold. Warily, they arrived at his door, uncertain, shuffling, cautious, embarrassed some poor fellow transported in a brown paper bag ear missing minus a limb his internals bled or fled away 50 years i've had him they might say look at the poor fella my oldest pal all tatty and worn and they would hand him over tenderly like entrusting their compatriot to his healing hands can you do anything for him, Doc? They'd plead. And he'd tut tut, he would, placing his heavy cheroot at the side of his workbench, allowing a plume of foggy smoke to escape his lungs. The cigar burning, content to be alone, while he examines, weighs up his patient, peruses the little fellow with careful soft hands. Have a name, does he? He'd ask, gently pulling on and rattled down the years of love, adoration, secrets kept, cast off, neglected, back of cupboard, then rediscovered, clenched close to heart, the bear's poor worn paws. Two fingers press against chest, test for growler, Yes, yes, there's something there, he says to himself, more than the patient's visitor. I'd forgotten he could speak, says them, skipping back across the decades by torchlight beneath the sheets, deep in conversation with their compadre. See what I can do for him, says Doc Ted, dismissing those that bore bear, and they stumble out. Apart from their old friend, collars up against the bitter day, the bear's glass eyes stare thereafter. Fifteen minutes of fame, and you waste your life and arm and telling everyone your name. Ha! When I was young as you are now, despite my silly jokes, I found it difficult somehow to talk to other folks and worried I might be disowned or left here on the shelf. Abandoned everything I owned and went to find myself. The journey brought me naught but shame or I couldn't fail. Unearthing what I sought became a cautionary tale. I found myself was never quite the man I thought he'd be. This reticent, reclusive shite. This skulking, sulking me. He doesn't write and wouldn't find the time to text or phone. I only wish I'd stayed behind and left myself alone. Patty Smith and the Rules for Life 
I wrap the book up in brown paper and I send it with a letter in the flyleaf where she put a kiss next to the X in the middle of your name. I saw her on the south bank taking pictures of her picture in the window and I knew her by her skinny jeans, her linen specks, her black watch cap, the fine outline of her moustache and the picture in the window of a day in Coney Island. She was in London for the signing in the bookshop with the rain outside and she stood up for the photographers with a beatific smile and did they pixelate it when she spat upon the stage? She sent them away when the flashes hurt her eyes and then she sang to us as if she were in a stadium in the bookshop with the rain outside. Sang of Coney Island and the Chelsea Hotel and of Blakey and Angels. And she said, don't be afraid to sing along. Don't be afraid to look uncool. There's no one here uncool as me. I didn't believe her, but I did believe in the Blakey and Angels, the awkward grandeur and intercession of angels. When you phone tonight, you ask me for direction, but I hardly know the way to go myself. So we'll sing songs of Blakey and angels. We'll tape paper to walls and we'll draw until we get it right. We'll buy our clothes from the mine shop and fill up our notebooks to tell back our days. Talk bravely to strangers, dance barefoot in rain, take photos of windows and cranes. I wrap the book up in brown paper and I send it with a letter in the flyleaf where she put a kiss next to the X in the middle of your name. So as well as being a love song to Patty Smith, that's a love song to my daughter who has an X in her name and she's, I suppose I'm thinking of her because it's like Christmas and I won't see her because of COVID. Um, and she's kind of in this song as, as is my son. And anyway, this is the band who sleep in my house. I've never met them before, but I've seen the hummocky shapes they make when sleeping. Their hair spread out over cushions in the early mornings when I trespass into my own sitting room with a shriek of sorry, which makes them stir, but they'll never remember. These are the kids who test the resilience of their livers with BYOB and teacuped whiskey night after night in pubs and in community halls pushing the envelope of indie with loud, ripping vocal cords and vintage shirts. These are the kids who one day will watch their own kids on stage, just like the two of us sharing cheap Merlot linked in the long packs of friendship, the grey in our hair shining like glitter standing on chairs for a better view, dancing with care. There's a long way to fall. Okay, thank you very much. This has been a Word of the Words 2020 live stream compilation show, bringing um, some of the highlights of the shows that we've done during 2020. Uh, I'd like to just say a massive thank you to Emma Milner for, for bringing um, a word of the words to an online audience in such a, uh, a fantastic way. I'd like to thank everybody who's contributed their words and their videos and the performances over the course of 2020 uh, and everyone who's, who's joined in and watched uh, and shared our events over that time. Please keep supporting live entertainment. Please keep supporting a word with words. My name is Jim Higo. This has been a word with words, spoken word, live stream. 2020 compilation show. Enjoy the rest of your Christmas break. Enjoy the rest of Boxing Day. 
Okay, have a great new year. Here's to a much happier 2021. Um, see you all soon. Have a safe journey home. Thank you.